In this lesson, we're going to configure a TPO PID loop to control heating. We'll use a digital output point as the output for the PID, and the point will have the TPO time proportional output feature configured. The Groove, Epic, and Snappack Learning Centers have a resistor epoxied in the ICTD probe tip. We'll start from PAC Control Configure Mode. Expand the IO Units folder and then the IO Unit. Double click the PIDs folder. From here, we can configure up to 96 PIDs on this I.O. unit. We'll configure a PID starting with number 0. Double-click it or click Add. From here, we'll configure the PID. Give the PID a name. I'll call it PID Parking Lot Heater. You can give it a description if you'd like. The input is the process variable, the current value you're monitoring. You can set the input to come in from an analog I.O. point that's configured on the I.O. unit. The input can come in from host. This can be from PAC control, such as from the set PID input command, from a PID or input on another I.O. unit, or maybe even a process variable that needs to be modified in some way before it's fed into the PID. You'll need to set an initial value if host is selected. The input can also come from the output of another PID. One PID's results are fed into another. Choose I.O. point as the input. We have two analog points configured in this strategy, so we'll select the parking lot heater temp. We won't check square root in this case. Low range and high range. You can set a valid range for your input. Later on in our configuration settings, we can set up what to do if the input is out of range. Since my ICTD probe is in a room, I'll set up my low range to 60 and the high range to 90. Next is the set point. The set point can come in from an analog point, from host if it's going to be controlled from pack control, pack display, a PID, or a point from another I.O. unit, or be set by the output from a cascaded PID. I'll choose host. Notice what the default value is set to, 0. Caution here. You want to be sure you enter an initial set point value. Until you initialize the set point, such as through a command in your strategy, then zero is your set point. You might get some unexpected fluctuations in your process. Enter an initial value of 84 degrees. The output lets us choose between IO point or host. Choosing IO point lets you select an analog output point that corrects the process variable. We're going to select host because we're going to read the output value with a PAC control command and send it to a digital output point that's been configured with the TPO feature. Lower clamp and upper clamp. This prevents the output from going below or above the limits you've set. But notice that the lower and upper clamps are set to zero. For the TPO output range, it's zero to 100%. So enter zero and 100 for the range. Min and max change are optional. Min change refers to what the minimum change should be before an output turns on a device. Max change is the maximum amount of change allowed by the output. This can prevent drastic changes that could damage your devices. Leave the values at zero to disable them. Output options when input is out of range. These options let you manipulate the PID in case the input, or process variable, goes out of range. The first option, Switch to Manual Mode when input goes out of range, lets you switch to Manual Mode for the PID until an operator or pack control logic assumes control. Another option is to select the Force Output when input is out of range. This is only in Auto Mode. This lets you set the output to a minimum and maximum value when the input goes under and over range, respectively. Leave both of these options unchecked. For algorithm, choose velocity type C, the default. No one algorithm is right or wrong. It's what you choose to work with. Choose auto to activate the PID when the strategy starts. Manual mode is used for debugging and lets you control the PID. The scan rate is set to a default value of one second, but you need to modify this value for your PID. To properly find this important PID value, use the PID tuning demo on the Opto22 website. We're going to go into more details in a future lesson, calculating the scan rate P, I, and D terms. Enter a value of 0 
Going through the PID tuning demo will also help you arrive at the ideal gain, that's the P term, I and D terms. Enter negative 4.31 for gain, 0 0.028 for the I term, and 0 0.007 for the D term. We won't set the feed forward parameters, but they're constants that are added and multiplied to the PID output. Be sure the enable communication box is checked so that the controller running the strategy can communicate to the PID on the I.O. unit. For more information about the various parameters in this dialog window, check out Form 1641, the Opto tutorial for PIDs, or the Help button below. Click OK to finish configuring it. PID0 is now listed. I'll adjust some of my columns, and then click Close. Expand the PIDs folder, and the name of the PID we just created is listed. Save the configuration. Because this is a TPO PID, it needs some programming logic from the Pack Control strategy. In the next lesson, programming a TPO PID loop, we'll go through the steps to set this logic up.